everybody. My name is Vicente. I use he, him pronouns, and I am the CUIP Games and UCSC Community Manager. AGPM and Career Success are excited to bring you for today's event, Design Games, Use Your Degree in the World. We hope you're excited for the program as much as we are because we have four amazing people here today to lead a discussion on how they got into their careers and if their design degree has helped them or not. Uh, before introducing our amazing host, I want to provide a little bit of information on the, the event's uh, logistics. So we're going to be recording today's program and making it available on the UCSC Career Success YouTube channel. The program format will include pre-written questions, and then afterwards we'll use the rest of our time um, for a Q&A with the audience. At the end, we're also going to be opening up breakout rooms. So if you would like to have deeper conversations with the panelists, um, that would be the good, that would be the time to do so. Uh, please submit all your questions at any time in the chat box below to me, um, and I will be collecting those for our Q&A session. Uh, we would also like you to take a minute or so to fill out a pre-event poll, which I will launch right now. There we go. Um, and we'll just give people- Did we answer this too? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to give people about two minutes to fill this out. Hey, this is Bennett, the AGPM program manager, popping in while you're taking the poll to let you know that um, we've been running these polls throughout the Design Your Future events um, so that we can really gauge how impactful these events are for you. And so we run a poll at the beginning to see how people are feeling. We run the same poll at the end to find out what benefits people got out of this event. And it's been really awesome seeing how much these events are helping our students so far this year, um, and also where the gaps are um, and what kind of programming people might want to see in the future. So um, thanks everyone for doing these. And I hope you can stick around to do the poll at the end. And uh, this is our last event for the year. And we're going to send a um, survey after this to show you some of the results and ask you what you're interested to see in this event series next year and going forward. Um, and I just want to say that the I was just talking to the Dean of the Arts Division today and he was saying how this kind of data driven approach that we're taking uh, and really hearing directly from students what y'all want and what would be helpful for you and then us acting on that is really, really important and it's going to um, hopefully, you know, help us get more resources to continue to make this a really great series. So thank you for filling out our poll. <laughs> and that's why it helps. Yeah, thank you, Bennett. It's that, it's not that song. Thank you for filling out a poll. <laughs> no? Okay. I think so. I didn't realize there were more questions and thought that people would be changing their major at the beginning and end of, <laughs> <laughs> of the meeting. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. Um, first, let's just do a quick glance. It seems like there's a lot of um, the results. Um, a lot of third years, fourth years, and first years, which is cool, cool and good. Um, mostly computer science game design majors um, and AGPM in second place. Um, uh, most people mean to work in the industry, um, people feeling anxious about landing a job in the company, um, kind of neutral on feeling on like whether it's the only option. Um, agree, a lot of people agree, like just an agree on career paths, having multiple ones in mind. Um, seems pretty split about um, understanding how your skills can apply to other industries um, and kind of a, an agree on how your past experiences um, can lead to employment outside of games, which is cool. Not a lot of people aren't sure about um, the kind of job descriptions to look for um, and 
a lot of disagrees on knowing how to write a cover letter for <laughs> outside of the industry. So yeah, I wonder what the results would be if you asked how to write a cover letter at all. <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the polling. Um, yeah. So, yeah, thank you everyone for filling out that poll. Uh, now, let's give it up for our host and panelist, Matthew, game design lecturer at UCSC and Hostos College. Take it away, Matthew. Oh, that's me. Um, hi. Uh, I'm I'm Matthew. Um, I am a, a two-time college dropout and two-time UCSC alumni. Um, those two those two things aren't related. Um, I uh, graduated from the <coughs> computer science colon computer game design program uh, with a bachelor of science in 2015. Uh, I was a transfer student uh, from community college. Um, and then in 2017, I graduated from the digital arts ampersand new media program um, with a master of fine arts. Um, and I was in the playable, playable media division. Um, and since then, um, I, I, have, I, have, I have started teaching. Um, so I teach now, um, I'm a lecturer at uh, UC Santa Cruz. I'm teaching the senior capstone project this year. Um, along with uh, like a billion other people um, who are uh, wise. Um, and uh, I'm also teaching, uh, I am an ad, adjunct assistant professor, assistant adjunct professor, it's some combination of, of those three words um, at uh, Hospice Community College here in New York, um, along with uh, Marcelo, if you ever have Marcelo during your time here, um, he and I both teach there. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm. Uh, I have had a weird career path that kind of wound up in a space adjacent to games. Um, but I also make games of my own. So, um, but yeah. Um, so um, we have with us uh, three three alumni: um, Reshma Zakaria. Hello, Reshma. Hello. Um, and Reshma is a motion graphic design nerd. With us. Yes. You do, you do motion graphic design? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we have Reno Rivera. Um, and Reno. Does, Reno, I'm sorry. Um, Reno does technical services at Epic Electronic Healthcare Records. Um, and it's not Vanderford. the Fortnite people. It's not the Fortnite people. Um, <laughs> I, I, for a while, I was like, I didn't know they're breaking out into healthcare records. Um, <laughs> although I wouldn't put it past them. Um, and Jarrett Vandenberg, uh, does stuff at NASA, specifically software engineering visualization. That's true. So, okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, if you want to elaborate on you or what you do or your path here at UCSC. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess I'll start. Uh, I graduated from UCSC with a game design colon computer science degree in 2018. Um, and two years before that, I had started working part-time uh, at NASA doing uh, 3D art. Um, and then uh, we kind of started a project called NemoNet, which is a, um, a coral reef classification game. So you can play it on your iPhone or your computer. And essentially we give you uh, 3D models of coral reefs from around the world. And we ask you, hey, can you uh, help us identify what's like which type of coral is where? And you do it by painting on the coral reefs. Um, so it's kind of like this large gamified data collection uh, tool. And so um, after 20, I graduated in 2018, I kind of uh, got promoted to a full-time job there doing uh, computer science, um, some field mission photography, uh, writing proposals, doing art still. Uh, some video editing. It's kind of a generalist position. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my my story. Um, thanks. <laughs> Should I go next? Yes, right now, you go next. Cool. So I graduated in uh, 2019. Reshma was on my 170 team. So look forward to that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was part of the art and design games and playable media major. 
I probably missed an ampersand and or colon in that, but <laughs> yes. you get the point. It was also uh, the first CUIP uh, games. Uh, what's the title going by now? Uh, community coordinator? Something community like that. Manager. Community manager. You're doing a great job. <laughs> uh, and so what I do currently, um, Epic Electronic Healthcare Records, basically it's the systems that um, healthcare locations and medical institutions use to manage patient um, documentation of the, the care that they get across appointments or across admissions. And it's, it's kind of interesting and actually kind of closer to um, like ga uh, game dev work in the sense that the software continues developing and uh, there's still like active interaction with the, the user base. Um, and for what I do in my role as technical services, uh, it's, I work directly with the, the IT teams at specific organizations to help customize their software and make it fit for the, the workflows that they use at those orgs. So it's pretty interesting and a lot closer to, um, I don't know, <laughs> moderating a Minecraft server, except <laughs> you also have contact with the devs and also it's for people's health. Uh, Rashman, why don't you tell us a little bit about, tell me about motion graphics, Rashman. Yeah, um, so, so I'm a motion graphic designer at a digital marketing agency in LA called XX Artists. Our, most of our clients uh, are like big name talent or uh, brands. Um, some of them are YouTube, um, who else? We recently got a client called WeTransfer. It's kind of like Dropbox. We used to do stuff for Robinhood. Um, and we recently signed on Ninja from Twitch. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was brought onto this team in 2020 specifically because I was a designer who also had a background in games, which is apparently kind of rare to have that combination. Um, so I mainly work with YouTube gaming and I design stuff for them. <clears throat> and what motion graphic design essentially is, is working with After Effects um, and like making graphics that move. <laughs> so it's mostly 2D um, and then there is some 3D, like we had Roblox as a client for a time and we were doing some like cinematic sculpting and stuff for some of their characters, um, which is really cool because if it's for cinematics, you don't really have to optimize polygons, which is awesome. <laughs> um, you just like render it and you just send them the video file and it's cool. Um, yeah, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> just, just kind of introducing yourself, telling us a little bit of what you do, so we have some context to ground. You know all the oh, yeah. all the discussions we're about to have. Um, um, so I was also a transfer student. I transferred to UCSC in 2017, and then I was out in two years. I graduated in 2019 with Reno, um, and I was an art and design, games and playable media undergrad major, not a master's student, <laughs> so. Um, we, we often talk about the transfer gang. Do we have a transfer gang sign? Something to, <laughs> something to think about in the back burner. Um, so, uh, Reno, we'll start with you. Um, what, what do you bring from, like, what skills do you bring from, like, the game design program into doing what you do that supports that. Um, yeah. You mentioned I guess, managing Minecraft servers, but. Um, I guess beyond like the, the general, like being able to work in a team with across like a wide variety of specialties and uh, I guess in general collaboration and active communication of deadlines and stuff, whatever those buzzwords are. 
Um, something that's very game specific that I didn't expect to be in such a or be as prominent as it is is like being able to comprehend systems as a whole. So um, because software is uh, a bunch of small interwoven parts that are all working together and interact in very strange ways sometimes. Um, and the, the Epic application is split up into several different modules. Uh, the, uh, the one that I work with is uh, inpatient orders and Bugsy, which is the infection control um, module. And let me tell you, 2020, <laughs> really, really great year for a crash course in learning how to, <laughs> to handle infection prevention. But um, because it's, oh, I lost my train of thought because my cat's meowing. Um, <laughs> Where was I? I was game system. Yes. Um, a lot of the times it's hard to anticipate um, the immediate source of an issue and um, being able to understand, oh, these are what I'm interacting with that, uh, or what this function is interacting with and what are my, uh, what, what tools do I have for figuring out why? Uh, not only, I, yeah, I, I, I thought it was a interesting parallel with the work that I do to, as a game designer. And I also get to, to flex on everyone with my graphic design knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it's always important to just kind of, to flex on a little bit. We appreciate um, your service with the uh, infection control help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why why would that be important? <laughs> <laughs> um, Jared, how how about you? How it what when you go into uh, a digital NASA every digital day? Um, what <laughs> what what do you bring with you from from your time at the game design program? Um, well, there's definitely like. Uh, the obvious skills like programming, 3D art, um, the hard skills. Um, but I think uh, Reno really hit the nail on the head with the uh, um, teamwork. Um, we kind of have a phrase in software and I think uh, it applies to pretty much everything, but great software isn't made by great programmers, it's made by great teams. And Google did a survey about um, like which of their teams like had success versus which of them didn't have success. What were the differentiating factors? And the only um, metric that they came up with that actually measured that was whether or not the team had a high degree of psychological safety. Um, and so I, I think one of the most important things you can learn um, at school is not just like having access to these professors, but having access to like other students and like practice teamwork, practice empathy it is something you can practice. Um, and I'm very grateful for uh, the time I was able to spend at UCSC um, working with fellow students and kind of learning how to not get extremely frustrated at other people <laughs> while I try to make something with them. Um, so it's a lot of those skills that are, are really sticking with me. Um, even if that's not really something that you can like just throw on a resume, just be like, I have empathy. <laughs> and then people are like, well, great, that, we want that person. <laughs> Um, but in the in practice, that's really what I think benefits me the most from like my time at college. Um, but of course, uh, yeah, I, I work with software, so programming, and I um, I do art and all that stuff. I think it's similar. It's true with if you're designing games, anything you learn is going to help you. Um, and I think to some extent that's true of wherever you go. Um, you know, just having like a background and like how to make things look good in like motion graphics or 3D art, it's gonna help you. Um, that's kind of uh, my uh, initial first thoughts. I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> that those all sound like true things, um, except that one thing. That sounds like a lie you made up. <laughs> um, uh, brief, brief interlude, Reyna, what's your cat's name? Oh, my cat's name is Leia. Okay, uh, all right, thank you. I just wanna get she that is out of the way. She is a princess, but she was named for a different reason. Okay. Um, Reshma, how about how about you? What do you what do you take with you from from the game design program? Um. Yeah. 
So although I don't optimize my polys anymore, <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot of that software knowledge that really transferred to what I'm doing now. Um, uh, so mainly what I use now is After Effects. And I would say that it's very similar to animating in Unity 2D or Spine 2D, if anyone knows what that is. Um, and yeah, storyboarding also became really important. Storyboarding and mood boards to convey ideas to other members of the team. And then as everyone already mentioned, uh, teamwork makes the dream work. So <laughs> um, interpersonal communication was very, very important. And one of the big differences I noticed working at a marketing firm versus a games company is that everyone here is really extroverted and extremely outgoing and like we only work remote but wow <laughs> people have a lot to say um, and they want to know everything that you're doing so they really expect you to communicate about the details of everything that's going on so you can't just be like a genius in the corner developing your own thing <laughs> are, you, are you calling game designers nerds <laughs> uh, maybe marketing people think that i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just kidding i don't know yeah and i guess piggybacking off of that um even if you can sit in the corner and uh, be a genius nerd uh sometimes it's actually just easier to ask people for help that's one thing that i learned about it's really good to ask people for help and a lot of times um I feel like there's a pressure to like um, internally just know everything so that you don't come across as um, so you don't come across as giving bad advice or uh, mm -hmm. that you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but the mm -hmm. the important thing is to like uh, own the fact that you don't know things because not knowing things means that you you can start figuring out how to know those things. I just came off of a full day of work. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's great. <laughs> speaking, oh, it was good. <laughs> speaking engines are, are fatigued. Oh, thank you, though. <laughs> um, so um, we'll start with Jared on this one. Um, what do you think your strongest skills are? <laughs> and how have they served you both, both in designing games and your time in the program, and also now that you are oh. off in space? I assume NASA is just in space. Yeah, it's, I actually worked in space before the pandemic. Ah, um, uh, yeah, that was you just space. <laughs> yeah, that so, also, I just saw a message from Ben saying you have to answer the questions too. <laughs> oh wait, what? Oh man! Oh. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> oh, I thought I could just kind of moderate my way through that one. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Uno reverse um, card. Uh, my your strongest skills, anime. Matthew? Um, specific skills I learned from the game design program that supports my work. Um, we touched a lot about collaboration. Um, and, uh, you know, now that I'm doing teaching I'm you know I'm doing I'm I'm doing a lot of that both like collaborating with other like teachers and other professors to like kind of figure out like uh like curriculum shenanigans um but also just like I I now work with a lot of students who are going through a lot of these same things so you know in a very direct way it's like what did I learn from the program well I learned the program and now I can kind of talk to like students in the program about it um and even like you know aside from like my work here at uc santa cruz like off in off at hostos uh we, you know we have a lot of the similar things of like okay i can think of like okay what what things um both in my role as um as an undergrad student and a graduate student and a ta and all these things like what worked what didn't work um what can i steal from to like carry forward into into my own curriculum um, but oh, I, can't, I can't believe I have to answer these questions too. <laughs> Ridiculous. Catch you off guard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right. Now that we're, now that uh, we just pull 
Bennett's dagger out of my side. <laughs> um, Jerry, what? Oh, I'll, I'll ask a question again. Uh, what do you think your strength skills are? How have they served you both uh, in in the games program and and outside of games? Yeah, um, I don't know if if it's really like you call them skills, but I think uh, uh, two of the things that I've, I've been kind of lucky to uh, stumble upon are are uh, just keeping the passion alive, um, like you know having a good like support group and friends who are able to. Uh, I guess yeah, one of my strongest strengths is like my friends, <laughs> so um, it's important like. Anytime I've actually like learned a skill, it's because like I've uh, felt proud about it, or I've not felt proud. I felt passionate about it. Um, I sorry, I saw your message and I just said proud. <laughs> um, but I think one of the major takeaways from college has been I came into college thinking I'm going to be the best game designer in the world. I'm going to learn this and that and all these things. Um, and then by the end of college, I feel like uh, I'm no longer like a goal-oriented goal person. Like I just kind of care about having fun in the moment. Uh, I've become a lot less goal-oriented, which I think has actually kind of improved my like chances of learning things. Because um, if you think about like two people who both want to be uh, the greatest game designer in the world, um, and they kind of go about it differently, one could definitely achieve that goal, and one could totally miss the mark. Um, but if you're thinking about like, I just enjoy learning every day, like the process, if two people have the same process, they're going to reach the same place, no matter what their goal is. Um, and it's also a lot less stressful because if I'm thinking I need to achieve this thing, then if I don't achieve it, then I feel terrible. <laughs> and if I do achieve it, then like, it's like, that was great for the moment. And then now it's like, oh, what do I have to achieve next? Um, so I think a lot of it has been a lot of like, how I've grown in college uh, as a result of the games program has been like, like mentally, I guess, uh, not really like um, focusing so hard on all these like things I have to do, which is kind of also in line with the theme of the meeting, because it means like, I don't feel like I need to work in the games industry anymore. So it's allowed me to be like, oh, like here's an opportunity outside the games industry. I don't feel bad taking it. Um, and I've kind of noticed with a lot of my friends who graduated and uh, people like, uh, we work together is there's like a strong correlation between like your mental health and how well you do in the world um so it's it's like if i had to give advice on what skills to focus on it wouldn't be like c plus plus or Maya or after effects it'd be like just like see a therapist and make sure you're doing well <laughs> um, that's like the most important thing both mentally and like life and also it's gonna help you in your career a lot um so that, that's kind of my answer to the question <laughs> Um, well, maybe, maybe one day we'll start that kind of like international tournament of game designers who go head to head for the we're like reigning <laughs> best game. The designer. crown, the king of game designers. Uh, I mean, Varistas can do it. We can what, too. <laughs> that's not what Global Game Jam was <laughs> originally. Um, like, uh, there's a Yu-Gi-Oh joke in there somewhere. I'm gonna leave that in the trash. Um, <laughs> Reshma. Um, yeah, what do you what do you think skills um, your strongest skills that have served you both both in games and outside of games? Um, this is kind of generic, but definitely like learning quickly. Um, I had no experience or exposure to really any type of digital marketing outside of being on Twitter a lot, um, and. So when I started this job, there were a lot of words and things I didn't know. Like I didn't know what a copywriter was or what social voice was or what an editorial calendar was. And everyone else came into the job already knowing this stuff, it felt like. But um, yeah, I just had to pick up that stuff pretty fast. Um, then the second thing, okay, this is actually something I don't think is my strongest skill, but could really benefit people. Um, being able to talk about yourself and market yourself. Um, I had trouble with that with a lot of my first interviews um, uh, within and outside of the games industry. I really didn't know how to talk about myself or like 
accept compliments on my work. I just got really shy and I didn't know what to, how to respond. Um, so essentially, this is also for all of you artists out there, people looking to pursue a creative career. Uh, yes, you need the talent and the ability to do your job well, but you also need to be able to talk about yourself and put yourself out there and make sure that your work is seen. Um, because that's essentially half of what you have to do to be successful. Otherwise, it'll be like you'll have all this talent and ability and no one will see it. Um, and that's a skill in itself that took quite some time to learn. The rest of it is luck, but yeah. I don't know if I answered the question. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, cool. But you didn't uh, solve the puzzle. Um, but <laughs> you can do that next panel. Um, <laughs> Reno, how about you? Strongest skills? I'd like to solve the puzzle. I'd like uh, to solve the puzzle. <laughs> do it. Do it. Um, so I guess leading into both of the, both of my fellow co-panelists, uh, and I guess not yet Matthew, but uh, leading into both of your responses, um, understanding that there's not just a single way of achieving something. There's uh, many roads to what you want to do. And I guess the, I, don't, I don't want to just reiterate the, the whole goals thing, but uh, people are noticing my cat meowing. <laughs> she has stuff to say, um, but it's distracting me from talking about um, realizing your potential. Um, I guess success can be whatever you quantify it as. So, um, uh, oh, I'm getting all my metaphors mixed up, but <laughs> the metric by which you measure yourself is inherent to you alone. Uh, you are doing the, you are making, you're setting the high score for what it is to be yourself. And that means you can only go up. So don't linger on your, on, on your regrets for too long and know that you... Oh, I lost my train of thought. You can fail during a video conference with a bunch of people who are you looking at you. You can't fail, you're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm reassured. Um, but yeah, I. I guess I, I don't know if that's a skill, but being kind to yourself and letting yourself have victories like that. Um, don't diminish the successes that you have because it's not as if those go away just because something else uh, you're unsatisfied with. I guess I also now have to answer this question. Um, <laughs> I had this whole time to think about it, and I'm like, suddenly I'm I'm just flabbergasted by the prospect of answering any question. Um, no, it's because it's because Leia, um, yeah, blew you up can my Alderaan words. You can let her speak. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, she's kind of um, shy. So I I don't know. Like the thing the thing that I do the most because like I I you know in addition to teaching I'm also like I um, I make like weird text games um, and I'm I'm kind of like an indie game designer in whatever capacity that means, um, which means I don't make any money. Um, but um, I, uh, oh, Bennett, um, I didn't, I didn't develop my, my humor from the program. You can't, you can't take credit for that. <laughs> um, nice try though. Um, the, um, like I do, I do a lot of like writing, like, you know, aside from like the things that we've talked about already, like, uh, like I write a, a lot um, both because my my games are in text and I make um, like I do like interactive fiction stuff, but also like I like you know everyday everyday documents. Um, I uh, it, I don't know. It sounds it sounds like the most boring thing I could possibly say. Like I'm really good. I'm really good at writing documents, but uh, damn, I'm good at I writing. I write a documents. baller email, dude. I, I do write really a baller shame. email, um, and <laughs> I you know I don't know. Like I did a lot of. Um, <laughs> I did a lot of like paper writing in the program. Um, uh, uh, Stacy Mason was teaching uh, a class that was like, it was like a five week summer class. And it was like the most intense class I've taken in my entire academic career, grad school included, 
because it was like on Monday, we're playing a game. On Tuesday night, I need a two page paper for that. And it's just like, that's not a big paper, but like the turnaround on that was just like, oh, let's go. I have to have like, not just like write paper, but like have like critical thoughts and like sharpen that, like that, that impulse to, to like have a thought, put it to paper and make it not um, absolute garbage. Um, so yeah, I think that that's the thing that I, that's like the, that's like the biggest gem in my trove that I, I, I pet every day. Um, <laughs> Cause that's what you do with gems. Um, anyways, moving on from my weird treasure trove analogies, um, onto a question, oh, my favorite. Um, uh, 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 let's start with Reshma. Um, how does um, the work you do um, align with your values? Um, and is there a relationship between how your job impacts the world and the way you hope your games might impact your audiences? Yeah, that's a big question. It's a big question. <laughs> I can repeat it if you need. Oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> um, okay. So I think one of the biggest things I noticed about this company when I first heard about it and I first applied was that the company's values reflected my values and what I found important. Um, while I was looking for jobs, I would always check the company's background and who worked at the company. What did the diversity breakdown look like? Um, at XX, the company is 64% female and also 64% non-white, like varying ethnic identities. And I felt like there was quite a bit of representation there and that they had done that um, or taken that into consideration at an early stage in the company's, um, when the company had started out, they were already considering those things. And that was something I didn't see at some of the bigger AAA game studios, for example. At a certain point, when a company gets so big, they have to backtrack and then like, if it's already majority male, it's hard to get minority voices in there. Um, but I did find it similar to some independent game studios, like smaller indie game studios had better diversity breakdowns from what I had seen. Um, so it really depends. Anyway, that was something important to me. So I did look for that specifically when I was looking for a job. Um, yeah, then, is there a relationship with how my job impacts the world and the way I hoped my games would impact my audiences? Um, part of what my job is um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I do some research into smaller creators, mainly on YouTube as a platform and also on Twitter to figure out who to spotlight and what type of content and who they are um, and whether spotlighting them would be a good thing for them on this specific handle and so on and so forth. Oh, and then first I find that creator and then I have to pitch it to a team within my company and there is vetting and all this other stuff and it gets kind of complicated, but that's my job. But it's cool because um, I get to see a smaller creator grow because we decided to promote their content, which feels very cool. <laughs> And it really reminds me of the work I did in my senior year on Play Magazine, which is like just super nostalgic for me now. <laughs> so yeah. That's also, I like this same kind of feeling that um, I imagine you would go through if you were like Rita Repulsa, like making your monsters grow. Um, that, maybe that reference is too, is now too old. Um, I got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Reno. <laughs> that's, that's for us. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, Jared, how, how do you feel about your job aligning with your values? Um, well, I guess the easy answer would be my team works a lot on coral reefs and I care about coral reefs. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, when I was, I, 
when I was applying, I was like, just please someone give me a job. <laughs> I don't care who it is. Um, I think the question about how does the work you do impact the world relate to how you hope your games impact the world? Um, your games might impact your audiences. Impact your audiences, yes. Um, I remember a lecture by Robin actually talking about like how some people enjoy more like making games for the product, like the actual game itself. And some people who, who enjoy like making the game <laughs> and it's okay if the game is bad. Um, so long, it's like the process. And I, I feel like I'm much more of the latter. Um, like, I think it's important for me to be in a team that like communicates um, in a style that like I kind of mesh with um, and that the process is um, kind of more important to me than like what the work I'm doing, how it impacts uh, the world. So um, I think a lot of how my values kind of um, relate to my work involves like you know what the team dynamic is and you know what the diversity is and what the um what the crunch is uh, that's another thing about not working in the games industry i was talking to someone in the games industry and there was like man they have such a cool job and they were like oh i'm sorry i can't can reply to you for the next month because i'm going to be in crunch and i'm like oh okay i guess i don't actually want to work in the games industry um but like I said, when I was looking for a job, at least the first time it was all pretty much all just like, what's gonna look good on my resume? Um, which I guess, I don't know if I should say shamefully or not, <laughs> but that's uh, my answer. <laughs> cool. Um, right now, how about you? How's your job hey. line with your values, do you feel? So uh, uh, um, I will preempt this by saying, um, as an artist, I am a selfish creator. I hate creating art because I need to make a profit. Uh, I hate uh, having to market something for it to be sold. Um, I brought meet me in, meet me to the garden meet me in the garden to E three in junior year and just vividly remember being exhausted and I don't know. I think that was the point where I realized like. I can continue doing the art that I want to, but I don't want it to be tied to uh, my continued survival, yes. And um, I think, I feel very lucky that I ended up at a company like Epic, not the Fortnite people, um, because in addition to being like, oh, healthcare, cool. There's like a tangible effect there. Um, it also just has like a very, um, a, a transparent and horizontal hierarchical st structure. Um, it's it's privately owned and owned by the employees, so that we're not beholden to like stake stakeholders or um, needing to always. Um, we're not developing software because we need to continue making money. It's the the enterprise suite. Uh, for healthcare organizations, it's like a uh, single upfront purchase, and that includes the work that, or, and after that point, um, the role that I do the, of technical services, um, the org will have uh, dedicated resources from, from Epic to continue implementing new updates and uh, helping tackle emergent challenges like a global pandemic occurring. Um, and I guess on an additional personal note, um, I'm a trans man. And one of the things that I get to do, or like a group that I'm part of at the at Epic is um, like an advocacy group for uh, sex, gender, and names. It's called Sign. Um, and that being able to advocate for a group that I am a part of and feel very passionately about being able to make an impact for a very difficult, um, it is a difficult world we live in. And there's a lot of, I, I know that 
several years ago, I would have not outed myself in front of a group of strangers, but um, because of who I am today, I feel comfortable enough to do that and um, continue advocating for a kinder world. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, pro, pro kinder world and also <clears throat> hell yeah. Um, I have to, I don't, I don't want to answer questions. <laughs> I don't want to answer questions. Um, are your soul. Uh, my shoes are in the other room. Um, the, uh, how, <laughs> um, so, you know, I teach, I teach here at UC Santa Cruz and, and also at, at Hostos. Um, I am, I mentioned up top, uh, I, I dropped out of college twice and then also uh, graduated from UC Santa Cruz twice. Um, I had a very long and weird path through like undergrad in particular. Um, I like start to finish, I spent like eight years uh, in undergrad because again, I dropped out twice. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing that finally like got me through to, to like, to transfer was community college. So I'm, I'm a big uh, ardent proponent of community colleges. Um, they're good. Um, they are real college, um, transfer gang, chats out. Um, and so on some level, it's like, I like being able to like return to some capacity, like to, to that well and like help other students who are, who are like in such a like vast <laughs> variety of positions to like help move towards um, making games because I like it when people are I like my favorite thing as a teacher is like hey you can like do this and someone is like like this happens all the time with like twine in particular where like um, even my like uh, when I've taught like young like uh, like elementary school students um, there's always like whenever I teach twine some people are like yeah twine whatever there's always like one or two kids who are like wait I can just write I can just write a story and I'm like uh-huh they're like oh Give, give me give me 30 minutes uh and then they just like they go off and it's like the the joy of being like here's this tool and someone being able to be like oh i can use this tool to make things um is like uh this is this is a thing that never gets old for me um so this is just um i get to do this in many very small ways and and um you know uh, i there is a um um there is a tweet by scott benson to the effect of like make art make rent and help others do the same. And that's, um, that is, that is near and dear to my heart. Um, so, yeah. Um, no joke. I think that's Epic's, not the Fortnite people, Epic slogan. It's very similar to that. It's do good, make money, have fun. Oh, okay. I was going to say it's their slogan is a Scott Benson tweet. That's <laughs> very specific. It's just a link to the, like in the banner up top. It's a, actually a live marquee that shows how many uh, likes and retweets are on it. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> um, um, so how, 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 how did we get here? This is not our beautiful house. This is not our, our, our beautiful car. Um, how, how, did, how did you find out about the field you work in now? Um, and how did you hear about the specific opportunity? Um, let's, let's, start with, let's start with Jerry. Ah, yes. So um, I feel like I kind of got lucky. Um, I remember in freshman year, I had a math class and there was some kid near me who was talking about uh, some project he was working on. And I found this like group of people who was like, each one of them was like destined for success. It seemed like one of them was like an app developer. One of them was like working on this groundbreaking research already. One of them was like, about to leave school to start their own small business. I thought, well, I should definitely stick around this group. Um, my boss told me um, a story about like a grad school class and like 70% of them or something became astronauts. So it's like, it's really like who you surround yourself with makes a huge difference. Um, and so the year after one of um, the people from this group was like, hey, Jarrett, um, like I saw this Facebook post by this guy, uh, Bade, who works at NASA. 
he's looking for someone who can do like 3D art and he needs someone like immediately. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that's great. So I messaged my now boss uh, on Facebook. <laughs> Uh, and I said, hey, heard you need someone. Here's my portfolio. Thanks. And I guess I got lucky because he like really needed someone like as ASAP. So uh, he was like, yeah, that's great. Like, here's the work, basically. Um, and that like kind of one thing led to another. Um, he thought I was very fast at my work. But in reality, I was pulling all nighters <laughs> to get things done fast. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you um I'm gonna spritz you with a water bottle <laughs> um but yeah that actually just continued um I continued working with them um until um I graduated and now I'm full-time I've been working there for about five years um so it's it's been uh, really nice sorry I was lost um in uh Harrison's like beautiful sunlit uh, <laughs> zoom background. Um, how I that was a still uh, image? It's so picturesque. <laughs> uh, uh, Reshma, how about you? How did you find out about about the the work you do now? Um, yeah. Uh, so I applied to this job through a connection I made while showcasing a game I made in 129, Marcella's class. <laughs> I made this game called The Parade um, and I showcased it at a festival called Playdate. Yeah, it was Marcella's class. Um, uh, Playdate at the LA Zine Festival in May of 2019. Um, and Playdate is a games festival that's run by Bella Messix. Um, who also gave a talk some years ago. Um, and maybe he's a UCSC graduate, I don't remember. USC, uh, but. Oh yes. yeah. Um, anyway, so this girl came up to my little setup where I had my game set up. Um, and she was like, oh my God, your game's so cool. And she was like this alternative goth queen. <laughs> She was really cute and we talked and um, her name was Cheryl. And then she was like, let's stay in touch. I really like your games. And then later on, I found out she was dating a distant cousin of mine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we uh, <laughs> stayed in touch. And then a year later, she posted this um, job listing on her Instagram story. And it was for a motion graphic designer at her current company XX Artists and um, I DM'd her about it and she was like yeah you'd be perfect and I'll vouch for you because they're looking for someone with games knowledge who's familiar with games and um, basically the industry and what's going on there um, and someone who doesn't just play games but has been involved in that space for some time. Um, anyway, so I applied and I had no motion graphics reel at that time. So I downloaded the trial version of After Effects and like made something really fast in a week before the trial ended. Wow. And um, so then they called me back with the offer, which uh, worked out and now here I am. <laughs> um, and so one of the key takeaways from that time was that networking really does matter. Like who you know is important. There are a lot of internal job listings at companies, including like Jam City, Google, so on and so forth. Um, and a recommendation can take you really far. Um, those internal job listings might never be listed to the public. So you could only apply if you knew those people, basically. Oh yeah, that's my game. <laughs> I'm also taking away that like really what I should be doing, what we should all be doing if we're on the hunt is just trawling Instagram stories. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I mean, if you're doing it anyways, might yeah. as well. <laughs> following literally every person on Instagram so I can just get more stories so I can get more job opportunities. Or <laughs> make my, a bot my... that does it for you. You never know. <laughs> Who would make a bot? That's so much work. Bot for you, and then work for you, and then... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Brenna, how about you? How did you how did you find your way to um, the other the other epic? Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, I uh, uh, confluence of the gods, I guess. I don't know. Um, actually, uh, okay, I'll t- let me set the stage. It is uh, summer of twenty nineteen. Uh, you are staying with a friend uh in their uh in their family's uh guest room so uh it's kind of strange because uh you see their parents every day uh, but also you are too tired to do to hunt for jobs um, and you don't really know what you're going to do with your future but you're definitely graduated and you're definitely here in your friend's guest room staying with their parents uh, and you do have a sword, but it's not big enough to uh, meaningfully do anything with. And uh, one time, one day, you check your email, uh, your, your UCSC email, and see that uh, six days ago, someone has emailed you about a handshake opportunity. And you're like, oh man, handshake. I haven't looked at that at all because I'm depressed. Um, and you're like, oh, but is it worth responding because like uh it was sent so long ago and maybe I won't get in because like wow this looks like a pretty important company and I did not respond immediately um but I did because I wasn't doing anything better frankly and um I don't know it's it's been a blur since then but I passed an interview and then they flew me out for an in-person interview um, and I guess I, uh, 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 I, I smiled wide enough and kept talking long enough for them to, to hire me and now they're stuck with me. And <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'm sure lots of folks familiar with the concept of imposter syndrome, highly recommend con man syndrome instead you know, whether or not you think that you're qualified for doing something doesn't matter as much as whether or not you can make other people believe that. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm on record um, as saying that I simply, like a lot of people experience imposter syndrome, I simply just don't. <laughs> mm, interesting. It's like how I've never How'd lost the game because I've been <laughs> cheating for game. years. <laughs> oh, I've actually won the game. Oh, congratulations. Uh, that's how you so do the, it. the game is that's also the, how the game is hired. a game of tag, but um, it's you play you're playing with a concept, so that's really like tagging. It's like oh the game. It's like oh you got tagged. It's like fuck, oh, I'm in now. Because it exists in the conceptual sphere, means that as you can override it immediately by saying that you've won. That, that, that's a little secret from Reno. The um, uh, 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 to to have me answer the question, um, I. I have been teaching for a long time. Um, I like, I mean, even going back to like doing volunteer tutoring in like uh, like high school and stuff like that. But um, when I was an undergrad, I was like doing tutoring. Um, when I went into grad school, I, I did TAing, of course, and then I kind of um, I, I didn't I didn't talk about it too much, but I have. I am still technically employed by a company that does like after school arts education, um, where I, in theory, um, teach like very small children how to make games also. Um, but yeah, just doing a lot of teaching and, you know, uh, Marcelo was, I was moving out to New York and Marcelo was like, hey, um, there's a position over at Hostos, you should put in for it. And then I did. And then they were like, okay. You start on Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> wow. And yeah, so that's, you know, just uh, being being in the field and like having enough like kind of experience was, um, you know, the, the teaching nine-year-olds how to make twine games when half of them are in the back of the class trying to make TikToks was an experience, <laughs> but um, it kind of Somewhat uh, leveraged into, into like other, other things, so. Um, yeah, I just want to add also, uh, with After Effects, um, before my current job, I got my first job by, uh, 
by making memes on After Effects, uh, and then someone saw it. And was like, oh, how did you do that? I want, I want to hire you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, also like real talk. I learned Photoshop because in seventh grade I was yeah. like, I want to make a Mega Man Zero <laughs> fan site, <laughs> yes. um, but I need like graphics for it. So, yeah. Um, I, so I, now I can I say I have fun. like fifteen years of Photoshop experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think my outstanding UCSC legacy is starting the the games at UCSC Discord. So, oh, <laughs> it lives on. Mon it does. Uh, moderate your Discord servers, kids. Yeah, it's <laughs> the takeaway. Um, so moving on to the next question, um, did you have conversations with people in other industries to figure out if you might like that kind of work? Um, if so, how did you how did you make those connections with those people in other industries? Um, let's I, I I I in my head I like had a I had a very discreet order, um, and now it, as time progresses, I am I am losing it all. Um, that means it's your turn. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, all right. Yeah. I'll start. That means I don't have to do it later. Um, uh, did I have conversations with people in other industries? Um, Mm, yeah no <laughs> um no because i've i've just kind of like always been teaching in some capacity so it was just like oh this is a thing that i like so i'll do more of it um done answer questions is easy <laughs> dang um <laughs> Rashma, do you want to do you want to start sure um yeah honestly just no, I didn't have any conversations with anyone before entering into this industry. I also found that like, just like casual conversation didn't really get as in depth as you'd hope if you're trying to learn more about an industry that you know nothing about. Um, one thing I am actively trying to do still is just like reaching out to people in UX and stuff like that. Um, because I'm trying to figure out more about what that's all about and maybe I'll eventually like maybe two years from now make another career switch we'll see um, but I would say that conferences and events like that definitely helped with this type of stuff which is a total bummer because that's not happening as organically during the pandemic but um, yeah <laughs> A year or more ago in March 2020, I honestly thought I was going to go to GDC or something and that obviously didn't happen. <laughs> so here we are, but hopefully that'll change soon and uh, I'll be able to see human beings again. That would be cool. Hope. Fingers crossed. Get yeah. that juice. <laughs> Um, Jared, how, how about you? Did you have conversations with people in other industries to figure out if you might like that kind of work? Yeah. Um, well, I didn't expect to be going into science, so I didn't have conversations with anyone in science, but I did, um, in undergrad, I was very undecided if I wanted to do programming or music or art. Um, and I did reach out to people in those kind of industries. Um, and I, at first it was hard because no one would respond to me. <laughs> Um, but actually it's, I've had like a lot of success reaching out to people, um, in like near the end of college. Um, I reached out to, uh, it's, it's actually, it kind of blows my mind. It, the first thing I had, a, I had one of Tad's classes. Um, I had a video editing class or like not a video editing class, but a video videography and games kind of class. Um, and I was playing alien isolation and I was like you know what for my project I'm gonna like study the camera work of alien isolation and <laughs> I just watched the end credits of alien isolation and I just sent a LinkedIn message to like everyone on that like the first 30 people on that list and it's amazing how it's, like if you say I'm a student one uh, or I'm trying to learn something um, and also I understand that you're busy so no worries if you can't respond um, and then like show an honest desire to learn, people will respond to you. I've talked to like lead designers at EA, lead lighting artists and like major games that I am a fan of. And it people like really uh, resonate with like an actual desire to learn. 
um, which I think is how I would recommend reaching out to people and connecting with people is instead of trying to make the connection, trying to like, like learn something from them and help them in a way. I reached out to like a lead designer at EA and was like, I run a tabletop group, um, a group of tabletop RPG players who also like want to make games, but aren't game designers. Like, do you have any advice for that? And they responded. And then like, I was like, oh, thank you. Like, you know, maybe I could play test something for you if you're running anything to like, uh, to repay the favor. And then like, suddenly I'm giving like play test notes to a lead designer and they're like, man, these are really good. Like, if like you want to make something for me, like modules, I can review that. And then like, now you're talking like sh sharing your skills and actually learning from this, these people. Um, so like, I highly recommend reaching out to people. Uh, you're going to get a lot of uh, <laughs> no, not people not responding, but you'll also get like, over time, you'll get better at it. And uh, it's, it's really incredible. Like, at least like to me, it feels like, uh, like a major, yeah, on LinkedIn, um, like a major uh, star or something. I feel a little starstruck. Be like, wow, this person is talking to me. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, on LinkedIn or by email, um, however you can find them. Uh, but yeah, I, I highly recommend if you're curious at all about like an industry or you just want to like make a connection, like just uh, send them a message and like try to actually like benefit them and yourself at the same time. Um, and I've heard stories of people reaching out to like someone who works at Google being like, hey, uh, can you tell me about like what the company culture is like? And then that leads into a, like a job recommendation. Um, so it's hard and it's scary, but it's definitely worth it. Highly recommend. Uh, just Reno, right? Did I, yep. am I? Okay, Reno, how about you? Conversations with people in other industries. Absolutely not. I have anxiety and I hate working. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. But um, I guess uh, uh, um, uh, 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 in full seriousness, I uh, if I'm going to have to work, I'd rather it be doing something that is a net positive for the world instead of just, I don't know, uh, being a corporate cog. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> Sorry. Did you, did you have conversations with people in other industries to figure out if you might like that kind of work? Um, if so, uh, how, how, how did you make those connections? Um, uh, I think my answer from before stands, I, <laughs> I guess, um, I didn't speak with people from other industries with the purpose of speaking to them because they were from other industries like if that makes any sense like I I found that the more organic connections that I've made just through like being friends with people and um, being active in like online communities or um, I guess in-person communities are a little bit harder to do nowadays but uh, you get the feel, um, and I don't, I don't really, I don't have a good in answer for this question besides uh, I have anxiety and I hate working, so no, I have not talked to anyone else uh, from other industries for that purpose. <laughs> uh, it's scary. Um, this, this next question is my favorite. I've been like eyeing this the whole time, like yeah let's get you let's get you this one this is the real stuff um do you still have a game design practice um and how how what kind of relationship does that take to your work um let's start with jared <laughs> okay um yes i love making games I will continue making games until I hate making games. <laughs> um, and I, it's actually kind of astonishing. Uh, it, it almost feels like like uh, it's scripted or something. I'll be passionate about something and you know practice it like game design or right now I'm building my own engine or writing music. And then magically at work, it's like, you can apply the skill now. <laughs> um, it's amazing, like no matter what I like try to like learn 
uh, it almost always like has some kind of work application. Um, and I'm part of a group that's like um, passionate about like keeping the spark of like enjoying games and game design alive outside of the pressures of the industry. Um, and I think it's really important, like if you're doing what you love for a living to like m spend time making sure that doesn't, uh, doesn't like destroy your love of that thing. Um, uh, no, I don't have a joke. Um, <laughs> fresh, how about you? Do you sell the games I practice? Yes, um, I do still freelance, uh, mostly as a game artist. It's been pretty tough balancing that with the full-time job. Um, but maybe in the next couple months, my game will finally come out. We'll see. Um, <laughs> it's mostly been like pixel art. Uh, type of stuff because that is fun. Um, mostly I only work with people that kind of understand my position and how um, the drive to do work comes and goes and uh, <laughs> yeah usually I'm too tired to do anything. Um, uh, but yeah I used to do like I would do stuff for D&D &D homebrew things that my friends were coming up with and I would also let me see like friends would contact me about their game ideas and then I'd see if I could help them make mock-ups or like a first pass on assets and stuff like that um I am currently working on a game with someone I met at Playdate again um and like I know their work was really good so I was looking forward to working with them and it's definitely I'm excited about this game I don't think I'll be able to beat it, which sucks. I'm actually really bad at playing games. Um, uh, but yeah, so I do still kind of make games a little bit. Okay, hold on. I'm making a game right now. I still kind of make games. You, you make games. <laughs> There's no kind of, what are you? <laughs> Diminishing your success. Don't diminish your success. You <laughs> um, Brenna, Brenna, how about you? Tell us, tell us about your, your game design practice. Uh, it's been kind of a crazy year. <laughs> Why? So, Why is that? Hmm, I don't know. It's all been a blur. But um, I, even though I haven't been able to do any active game design recently, I know that Art will be there whenever I am able to return to it. So yeah. I, I do not feel like uh, I have stopped being a game designer just because mm -hmm. I am not actively doing working on a game. But um, like, I just keep the gears turning. Sometimes there are, yeah, sometimes ideas just come to you, and um, I think that's a really I will good be point. able to elaborate on this more in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I think you hit on a really good point, which is like you don't you should follow your passion, even if like just because like for maybe a year I'm more passionate about cooking than making games and I spend all my time cooking doesn't mean that I'm like not still a game designer. Uh, and just because my career isn't making games doesn't mean like I'm not still a game designer. And like it's totally okay to be like, this isn't gonna help me career-wise, but this is what I'm passionate about. Or like, maybe like, I just prefer to play video games right now than like make games. Like, it's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, um, I think um, there's a lot of pressure to like uh, co commoditize, is that the word? Is that a word that exists? Yeah, yeah commoditize your skills. Um, and I would, highly like to recommend uh, separating your work and the things that you enjoy. Um, it doesn't have to be completely, but it's, game design should also still be something for you, not just, um, I don't have a good way out of that sentence, but uh, let it be something you enjoy still, even if that means not 100% uh, capitalizing on your 
uh, possible productivity or whatever. Yes, um, I, yeah, I, I make, uh, I mentioned earlier that I make like um, weird indie text games um, and I don't make very much money. And someone said I had a friendly face in the chat, but like, honestly, like the fact that like my income, my like, like living is not reliant on my games means I can, I can mess around. Yeah. Um, I can do, I can do some weird, some weird stuff without thinking about like, is this going to sell money? Like it, it's fine to, to like do that and engage in that logic. Um, but I can do stuff for me. Um, and that's exactly what I do is I make, I make games that are really like for me first and foremost. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I, I have a, I have a zine that has a game called rock in which you just, um, it's like rock, paper, scissors, but you can only do rock. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I do, I do stuff like, I can do stuff like that. Um, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, I <laughs> read it in class. It's, <laughs> it um, really it's, good. it's probably my best game I've ever made. So. <laughs> um, it's hard to have peaked so early in my career. But, um, <laughs> the, um, yeah, like, so, I, you know, I do a lot of these and like when I'm, when I'm teaching, I also like, um, cause I teach like, um, but at hospice in particular, I'm teaching like, like freshman level, like game design classes. And so I do a lot of these things where I'm like, well, you don't have programming skills yet. Um, we could do like, how do you learn game design? Um, I think one of the best ways is, and in fact, the, my rocks, paper, scissors, like zine started from like working with students. Um, I had to like, I think I was trying to explain MDA in uh, maybe like 120 or something like that um, to, to my students. And, um, you know, it was like, okay, well, we can take a simple game like rock, paper, scissors. And when we change the rules, we change how the game feels. Um, here, I'll take, I'll take away scissors and paper. How does it feel now? It feels very different. Um, it, it's the game, the game changes quite a bit. Um, so this is like a thing that I, I do a lot with my students and like, again, tying into like putting, putting like ideas and concepts and instructions into words and, and doing all these things. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't, I, I feel like I have all my question versions of these questions are easy because it's like, well, yeah, it relates to, to making games relates to teaching. It's pretty, it's pretty direct. The answers are good though. It's valuable information. Oh, thank you. All my information is valuable. What do you mean, Jared? Yeah, of course. I'm just oh, trying this, to this is especially valuable. No, it's all, it's all gold. It's, it's all gold, <laughs> gold up here. 100 OP. <laughs> um, 100 polka dollars. Um, Thank you. Thank you everyone for answering these questions. Um, we now have time to answer questions from the audience, I believe. Quick anecdote about MDA though. Um, that was one of the interview, uh, part of the interview process for me was um, do a presentation on about something that you know a lot about. Oh. So I just it's described MDA to people. So awesome. Every time a class mentions MDA, remember it because did you, did you do the, the you might have heard it five times, beans. but people else outside in the world, they'll be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite like game design one-on-one lesson of like, do you have five minutes? Let me explain MDA to you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, now we're gonna go and move on to the question Q and A portion. Um, for anyone who has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, um, either directly to me or to everybody. Um, and then I'll go ahead and um, read them off. So we'll start with the first one here. Um, Nathan asks, calling back to what Jared mentioned about nature having a goal-oriented mindset, what would the rest of you say dictated your early career decisions, a goal-oriented mindset or an explorative? mindset. Um, I think for me, it was pride and <laughs> uh, fear for the future. But uh, it's, I learned to enjoy existing. And that helped a lot. The um... I, I have a I have a quick one on this. Um, I needed to get paid, 
um, uh, my my first job out of grad school um, after finishing my my master's master's degree in fine arts I worked at a bakery because uh, I had to get paid because I did in fact have to pay rent um, so sometimes sometimes it's like that um, and then you know I eventually like moved on to other things but um, I did make that bread I got up at 4 a.m uh, and, and made that bread oh. um, Shouts out to, I guess, Staff of Life, um, now in Watsonville. Uh, uh, Rishma, how about you? Um, can you repeat the question one more time? Yeah. Um, so uh, just what Jared mentioned about nature having a goal-oriented mindset, what would the rest of you say dictated your early career decisions, a goal-oriented mindset or an explorative mindset? Um, hmm. well, I think it kind of began as exploration and that exploration helped me realize what my goals were and that just solidified as time went on. Um, and for me, I kind of knew that I wanted to do something creative and make art and visuals from a very early age. So even before I was in college, um, I didn't, I already knew that I didn't necessarily want to stay in games. Um, I just knew that, well, when I was in high school, I thought games was the best way to do digital art. Like that was a major and a career that really needed that skill set, which I had been uh, learning since middle school, maybe. So it was kind of a means to an end in that sense. Um, and in terms of like applying to jobs and stuff, I, well, yeah, was also starting to get pretty desperate after I graduated and I was just like applying to everything I was hearing about. Um, and in that process, it was like, I was applying to a hundred things and maybe only heard back or moved forward with like four of the things that I applied to. So that's how that went. So it's difficult, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm wrestling moose off screen. Um, <laughs> um, wait to be. I think that was. I think or unless, you don't. You don't get to answer that one, Jared, because it was for everyone. But, <laughs> unless you're one of the answer, you can. Well, you want, unless you have thoughts, in which case I, I, I do them. have thoughts occasionally. Um, <laughs> I think, I think, um, it, it's important as with all things in life to find balance, right? Cause of course there are goals that need to be achieved and sometimes like really, really need to be achieved. Um, but it's also important to like, not get like, not a tie, tie your self-worth to your necessary goals, I guess. And like focusing on the process can be a good way of like kind of detaching yourself to that. If you trust the process. Um, like making a process for a specific goal and then like detaching yourself from that goal. Um, and, and of course, it's all situational as well. Like sometimes it's just like you just need something to survive and it takes up all your attention and that's totally fair. All right, thank you. And one more thing, um, uh, not meeting a goal isn't the same as failing. So yeah. It just means that your goal has changed, so. I, um, on, the, on that note, I have uh, somewhere deep in the Google Doc archives, I wrote um, when I was 18 and a couple times after that, my like life goals for the next five years. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that one went through a couple of revisions and then I stopped doing that exercise because, mm -hmm, yeah, anyways. <laughs> I remember... Uh... At my freshman year, I went to someone kind of high up at the uh, at UCSC, and uh, was I was like, I need to create like a goal list of these are the things I want to learn by the time I leave. And I said, What do I need to be doing outside of classes? And they said, uh, <laughs> They told me that basically the classes were like the bare minimum, and like if I wanted to get a job, these are all the things I had. To, it was like such a, a shock to me, <laughs> kind of a tangential story, but it it was uh, definitely like a shocker. All right, 
I think we're ready for another question, Kenny. Yeah. Um, Sandra asked this uh, specifically to, to Reno. Uh, where is your company located? Can you spell the name of it? And I'm unclear. Are you designing games for a health company or doing something else related for a health company or something else? Thank you. Yes. So it is epic, like the Fortnite people, but not them. Uh, we're located in Wisconsin. So uh, it is close to 730 right now. Um, and I don't, uh, it is not games that I make. Ooh, I'm speaking like the Lorax now, but um, it, it's, it's kind of like uh, IT work, I guess. It's but more long-term because rather than being like, oh, just an anonymous customer service voice on a phone, um, it's, I'm, I have like regular meetings with the, the IT staff at healthcare organizations and it's more of a long-term dedicated um, working contractor sort of thing, except I, I have access to the devs and can tell them when stuff is breaking real bad. Um, and uh, so far, that's all the questions we have. Um, if anyone else has a question, um, definitely feel free to answer that. Um, but I think, yeah, I mean, I, I think it was a really good presentation. Um, I'm sure a lot of questions got answered during um, during the, the question portion. So, yeah, thank you. Epic still hires through Handshake, so keep an eye out. <laughs> <laughs> this is just ah, for coming. rotating around me, waiting to. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, so. Are we doing the uh, breakout rooms or are we? Um, I can just chill here. Row? Yeah, I, I, think I, think, I think what we can do now is um, launch the uh, closing poll and then after the, afterwards um, we can go into the breakout rooms. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for your questions. Uh, we would love to get your feedback before we go in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. Oh, and please say thank you to Moose. Yeah, Moose. <laughs> and and Leia. Moose, thank you. And thank you to uh, Vicente, Bennett, Taylor for setting this up. This is super cool. Oh, yeah. Thank you also to the actual people who need to be thanked. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you um, for um, you know, coming and providing us with your wisdom. <laughs> I'm glad to be, uh, I'm honored to have been welcomed back on because, or back on. Uh, I guess I'm glad to be welcomed because if there's anything that my answers have indicated, it's that uh, <laughs> I'm still a mess, but if I can do it, so can you. <laughs> hey, Vicente, oh, yeah. while we're taking the poll, you want to plug the uh, Career Hub website? Yeah, sure. Um, let me get that link. Um, but yeah, um, for everyone here, um, I, I am working on a uh, little page on the games.uc.edu website um, called the Career Hub. Um, and so um, over there, I'm kind of just throwing in a bunch of resources, or well, not just throwing in, organizing. Um, we've got a bunch of resources there um, that link out to um, things that are pre-existing and also things that we want to work on in the future. Um, so all these videos and recordings from the Design Your Future series are either on there or will be on there soon. Um, and uh, during these uh, this week and next week, I'm kind of collecting the feedback. There's a link to a feedback form at the top of that page. Um, and there you can put in any feedback of anything that you um, think works well on the page or that you think needs more work. Um, and that will definitely be taken into consideration and um, used to, to build on, on it and make it a better resource for students. Yeah. So as we've been producing this whole series, we've really been cognizant that like 
these are the same questions that students ask year over year. And we were really determined to make sure that the work that we were putting into this and the talks and the other resources and documents that have come out of it can live all in one place so that game students can have access to that. So I felt really good when uh, some other advisor wrote to me and was like, I have this AGPM student and they're they are, they want to know about career stuff. And do you have a link to some site or some resource? And I was like, yes, we do now. Yes. And I sent them the link to the career hub. So thank you, Vicente. <laughs> Uh, for putting that together. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy to help. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the polling, and then we can just take a quick glance at that. Um, yeah, looking at this. Um, so oh, I just want to say. Uh, one thing is relating to the poll is someone told me advice recently that if you're writing a cover letter, try writing it in third person first. Uh, mm. Apparently that helps. <laughs> so I, I need to start writing cover letters. So I will definitely take that into consideration myself. Um, yeah, it looks like things are. Um, well, it looks like number five definitely went down. Uh, people are less worried that games is, is the only option, which I think is definitely good. Um, number of career paths, that's at agree. Um, the understanding how the skills translate, I think it's improved. Um, asked how, how everything else can help with employment that's improved um, the kinds of um, job or job descriptions I think that's gone up definitely great yeah, thank you all so much um, we gotta go ahead and stop those results and let's move on to um, the breakout so yeah thank you all for taking the time to fill out the poll. Um, on behalf of UC Santa Cruz, I'd like to thank you for joining this program. We, uh, we're going to now open up this break rooms um, for each panelist.